morning for everyone this morning in jesus name the lord will bless me the lord will open the windows of heaven for me i will be blessed this morning father in the name of jesus we bless your name we come to you once again today I will pray, Lord, you fill our empty vessels in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you touch us at the point we need a touch. You transform our lives at the point we need transformation. I will pray, Lord, that the power of the cross will work in everyone's life without any exception in Jesus' name. Bless our children, bless our youths, and bless our campus brethren, and bless all of us who are here in Jesus' name. Open the pages of scriptures to everyone, and make us to be partakers of the blessings of the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. In Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 21. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 21 and having an high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed by pure water let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful, the promised. We're looking at the conditional promises from our Redeemer. The promises he has given us and the promises he has made to us. In the last part of that verse 23, it says, He is faithful, the promised. The question then is, why is it so many people lay claim on promises and those promises are not fulfilled? Why is it many people will say, God gave this promise to me. I've been waiting for years. Other people have prayed on the basis of those promises. And yet, I have not received. And it says, He is faithful. The promised. The major problem with people is that they look at the promises of God without looking at the conditions attached to them. For every promise that God makes from the salvation of the soul unto the glorification of the saints from our spiritual life to our natural lives from the spirit and the body and from everything he has given unto us you'll discover he gives the promises and he attaches conditions to them and as you look at those conditions and you follow them graciously and you follow them faithfully and you follow them obediently it's then you'll find that God does not fail God cannot fail and God will not fail it tells us in Titus chapter 1 Titus chapter 1 here reminds us of the character of God when he makes a promise he fulfills the promise but he attaches conditions to them Titus chapter 1 verse 2 in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began the God you cannot lie and the God you cannot fail he has given us a promise and he says 
He even gave the promise before the world began. But as in due times manifested his word through the preaching, through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. He saves, he keeps, he heals, he delivers, he sets free. All we will ever need, all you will ever need from the time you were born into this world until the time you were born into the kingdom and until it takes you out of this life and it moves you on to glory everything has been provided and we come in prayer before the lord to receive them and you'll find if you look at those promises and you fulfill those conditions you'll see how god faithfully keeps this word second corinthians chapter one Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20 For all the promises of God All without exception The ones you know The ones you are laying claim to And the ones you are praying that God will fulfill All the promises of God in Him In Christ while abiding in him while remaining in him all the promises of god in him that he is you are born again you have come into the kingdom and you abide and you remain in the kingdom while you abide in him and his word abides in you he says, all the promises he has made, they are yes and amen. And everything must be understood that you are in him. And he tells us at the latter part of that verse that it is to the glory of God by us conditional promises from our Redeemer the one who accepts us and he brings us into his kingdom and we faithfully graciously abide in that kingdom and so as you look at these promises this morning and you know that God cannot fail. You're looking at the conditions attached to all those promises. And the Lord faithfully, mercifully, and graciously will fulfill them in your life in Jesus' name. Promises, conditional promises. Promises from our Redeemer. Conditional promises from our Savior. From the faithful one who brought us into the kingdom. So that he will do us good. And that goodness of the Lord will be abundant in every one of our lives today in Jesus' name. Can I hear a good amen on that side? The three things we're going to consider number one gracious promises for every soul you cannot say is there anything there for me is there a promise there for me has god promised me anything a man a woman a young one an older one has god promised anything for me gracious promises for every soul and as you come as you come to the lord and you say lord i'm holding on to the promise available for everyone 
he is no respecter of persons he will touch your life he is no respecter of persons he will change all those things that bother you and this morning he will do them in jesus name gracious promises for every soul number two great promises for his sons great promises for his son we've come into the kingdom we come into god's family we come and we're part of the redeemed assembly born again brought into the kingdom sons and daughters of god the sons of god have peculiar promises that god has made to them and those great promises for the spirit for the soul and for the body and for the sufficiency of meeting all our needs great promises for his sons number three god's promises for security that he keeps us in the faith persevering unto the end so that as you have come to the lord he keeps you saved secured and abiding in the inexhaustible grace of god until we see him face to face god's promises for our security number one gracious promises for every soul but understand all these promises have conditions and as you look at those promises and you see that's a condition there that's a proviso there that's something there attached to the promise that i need to keep he in his faithfulness will keep those promises in second chronicles chapter 7 second chronicles chapter 7 reading from verse 14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land many times as we read the word of god many people will isolate a part of the world and they do not look at the implication of everything that is said in that verse my people verse 14 my people now you want you read that my people my people we don't understand we think those are real saved sanctified favored children of god but you have to read the whole verse because it says if my people which are called by my name outsiders call them by my name other nations call them by, by my name neighbors call them by my name they bear what you call a christian name and yet and yet and yet although they bear nominal christian names as you look at the whole verse you can tell 
that these are not the people that have their names written in the book of life and you see it says if my people nominal people church goers the people that are called by my name if they will humble themselves what does that mean they're proud they are proud against the God of heaven. What does that mean? They are proud against the word of God. What does that mean? They are proud against everything that is laid down in the word of God. And it says, if these nominal people called by my name will come down from the ivory tower of pride, humble themselves, and pray what does that mean they have been prayerless there are many people called by the name of the lord they go to this prophet pray for me they go to that mountain pray for me they go to that shrine pray for me they go to that corner pray for me if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves pride is there and pray prayerlessness is there and seek my face they have been seeking for money they have been seeking for mundane things of this world my people nominal people nominal christians nominal church goers and then it says and turn from their wicked ways they've been wicked they have been wicked and they are called my people and then it says then will i hear from heaven you see the if there that's the condition if you forget how people see you how people think about you my people my people my people if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves will pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways that's the condition there are many people that pray for so many years and the pride of life is still there and the pride of possession is still there and the pride of appearing to the public as wonderful is still there and there is wickedness in their heart and the condition is for every soul if you will humble yourself and pray and seek the face of the lord and turn from your wicked ways god will hear from heaven this morning is a morning of prayer somebody there said this morning is a morning of prayer but the condition is you turn from your wicked ways you repent and say lord here am i i'm seeking your face and the lord will hear from heaven he will forgive your sin give me a good amen over there the secret sin that you commit the secret evil things that you do he he sees them and when you become sincere before the lord he lays a condition there and he says he will forgive and then he will heal our land we're looking at isaiah chapter 55 isaiah chapter 55 I'm reading from verse 6 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way. You see, the Lord does not gloss over sin does not gloss over wickedness it says let the wicked forsake his way 
and God does not have favorites. He sees wickedness there. He sees atro atrocities there. He sees iniquity there. And he says, let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man, his thoughts. Stop there for a moment. A righteous man. Many times we think of the actions of sin. We think of the acts of sin. But God looks at the heart. And as God looks at the heart, He sees the thoughts of sinning. The thoughts of evil. The thoughts of iniquity. The thoughts of cruelty. The thoughts of worldly pleasure. The thoughts the plan it says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man not only the acts of unrighteousness let him forsake his thoughts and then he goes on to say and let him return unto the lord not just return to the church there are many people that return to the church they do not return to the lord there are many people that return to the assembly. They do not return to the Lord. It says, you forsake your ways, you forsake your thoughts, and then you return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him. Mercy upon him. I said mercy upon him. And let him return to our God. For he will abundantly pardon how does he pardon? Who does he pardon? He pardons the people that turn away from sin, that return from the wilderness of sin, and they come to the Lord. They seek his pardon. They seek his forgiveness. And then because they repent, because they turn away from evil, they fulfill that condition. If they are backsliding, they accept the backsliders and they return to the Lord from their backsliding and the Lord will have mercy upon them that mercy will come to you this morning Isaiah chapter 1 Isaiah chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 18 Isaiah 1 verse 18 Come now And let us reason together Says the Lord Though your sins be as scarlet But you must come Though your sins be as scarlet But you must come now Though your sins be as scarlet It says they shall be as white as snow and though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool it's talking about salvation it's talking about cleansing it's talking about forgiveness it's talking about conversion it's talking about a change of life but it says you must come you come out of the darkness you come out of the evil and you come now urgently it says verse 19 here is the condition if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land but if ye refuse and rebel but if ye refuse and rebel coming to church if ye refuse and rebel Called by the name of the Lord. If you refuse and rebel. Standing to be a Christian. Professing to be a Christian. If you refuse and rebel. You rebel against the word of the Almighty. If you refuse and rebel. You shall be devoured, destroyed, devastated. With the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it 
it tells us then that as we come to claim the promises of the Lord we stand on those promises keeping to the condition of the promise Hebrews chapter 3 Hebrews chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 6 Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 but Christ as a son over his house whose house are we don't rejoice yet whose house are we don't conclude yet whose house are we don't jump yet whose house are we if 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 we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end you see the condition there we are his house we are his temple we are his people on one condition if we hold fast the condition of our faith the confidence of our faith to the very end wherefore verse 7 as the Holy Ghost says today if ye will hear his voice had in not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my works forty years wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do always err in their heart and they have not known my way so I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest take it brethren you're saved take it brethren you're a member of the body of Christ take it my brethren it says take it my brethren take it brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God you know there are people that tell us that once you are in you're always in once you're saved you're always saved once you're born again you're always born again once you're a child you're always a child you know those people are not they do not reason very well you know what everybody was a child of the devil everybody was a son of satan jesus said ye are of your father the devil if what they say is true once a child always a child that means everybody will be forever lost but it's not true because you are a child of the devil a son of satan but by looking at the call to the gospel and the call to salvation you turned away from sin and you came to the lord and you are a son of satan a child of the devil now there's a change you know a child of god once a son always a son it's not true look at that verse 12 take heed brethren lest there be in any of you any of you means anyone there's some people that you know they get to the top level and they say me whatever i do it's like they have a special pact with the lord doesn't matter because this is me others may not have that special peculiar privilege but here is me here am i whatever i do i still get to heaven no you probably will be in the hottest part of hell because you're taking the grace of god 
you're taking the mercy of God you're taking the goodness of God for granted that's why it says take it brethren lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin verse 14 for we are made partakers of Christ hold on we are made partakers of Christ read everything for we are made partakers of Christ what's the next word there tell me out loud tell me if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end if if we don't hold it fast unto the end you'll be lost point number two great promises for his sons great promises for his sons in second corinthians chapter 6 second corinthians chapter 6 we're reading here from verse 14 second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers he's talking to his sons he's talking to the family of god don't walk by the principle of the unbeliever don't go into the practice of the unbeliever don't act the same way as the unbelievers act don't be joined in the manner of your life with the life of the unbelievers be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers those children of israel understood when they were going to plow their fields they'll yoke two animals together and they'll be pulling the plow so that the yoked animals will come together who are kept together the animals that are yoked together those animals that are tied together they'll plow the same field he's saying that if you're going to have the heritage of sons you're going to have the inheritance of the sons you're going to have the promise of the heavenly father for the family you as a son of god as a daughter of god be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers ah that unbeliever may be of the same father the same mother with you don't be unequally yoked together with him that unbeliever may be of the same mother with you don't be unequally yoked together with her we're establishing this together we're doing this together we're yoked and joined together in this she's my mother's daughter uh-huh but unbeliever she is my father's son uh-huh but unbeliever unbeliever is some believer those are idol worshippers those are cultic people those are sinful people those are rebellious people those are unconverted unsaved unrighteous people be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers people think that's only in marriage of course of course of course you'll not marry an unbeliever if you do you are backsliding 
But it's not only your marriage, in business, in pattern of life, in the project you make, it says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. But what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? You are righteous, he is unrighteous. What fellowship do you have together? What communion has light with darkness? You are in the light, he is in darkness. What communion of you together? Verse 15, what concord has Christ with Belial? You belong to Christ, he belongs to Belial, to Satan. What communion do you have together? What concord, what agreement, what part? As he that believeth with an infidel, infidel unbeliever, infidel, a wicked man, a wicked woman, infidel, somebody not in the kingdom of God. It says, what agreement as the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God ye are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them I will walk in them I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look at the conditional. Wherefore, tell me the. Tell me out loud. Now, since you've been attending retreats, have you looked at your life? Have you checked your life? Have you seen what God is demanding from you? You come to the retreat. You go through the retreat. You finish the retreat. And that unequal yoke is still there in business did you ever think of coming out your nominal retreat person you don't have the mind of fulfilling the condition attached to the word of god the associations you have, the affiliations you have, and the societies you belong to. Have you ever thought of coming out and born again and born again? Uh -uh. The Bible does not accept that. The Bible says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye, what's the word there? And be ye tell me the word, be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and I shall I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Ye shall be my sons and my daughters on the condition that you come out. Come out of sin. Come out of wickedness. Come out of evil. And be ye separate. He says, that's the condition. And then you'll fulfill the promise of God in your life. And I will be. A father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and my daughter says the Lord. We're looking at um, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Here it says in verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation of fear and trembling work out your own salvation of fear and trembling look at the beginning of the verse wherefore 
my beloved. Those are believers. Wherefore, my beloved, those are cherished sons and daughters in the kingdom. And yet he says, walk out your own salvation of fear and trembling. The people that tell us that there's no fear of being lost, there's no fear of backsliding, there's no fear of going to hell, you're saved. You're born again forever. You're saved. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Read your Bible. Beloved brethren, work out your salvation of fear and trembling. If there is no danger of being lost after you are saved, if you become careless and you slide back into sin and you dive back into sin and you emerge yourself, immerse yourself in sinning, if there's no fear of being lost, why did he say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Then he goes on to say, for it is, for it is God which worketh in you. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without telling me. I can't hear you. How many things should you do without murmuring? Tell me, tell me. All things. You're working for the Lord and the church. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. You're doing something at the retreat. Do all things without murmurings and disputing. That she may be, that she may be blameless and harmless sons of God. There were without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain not labored in vain you see the condition he attaches to that if we are going to remain sons of God great promises he gives us for then conditions Revelation chapter 21 verse 7 Revelation 21 verse 7 He that overcometh That's the condition That's the condition That's the condition He that overcometh You overcome temptation Temptations will come to you To act like a sinner To do what the sinners do To drink what the sinners drink Temptation will come to you To marry a sinner's marry. Temptations will come to go the way of sinners. But the condition is, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my sons. Number one, gracious promises. For every soul, those promises have conditions. Number two, great promises for his sons. Those promises have conditions. Number three, God's promises for our security. God's promises for the believer's security. The believer's security is conditional. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. 
and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold the lord is talking about the time near his return and he says because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold you'll see people around you here and there iniquity abounds around you and because of that the love of many waxing cold verse 13 but he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved you see the condition there i'm a believer praise the lord are you enduring are you enduring to the end are you standing standing on the word of his righteousness and unto the end only those who be saved luke chapter 9 verse 62 and Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You understand that? A man comes and he puts his hands on the plow. When you put your hand on the plow, you look straight ahead of you. And your plow is straight line. If you're looking back, you're not looking the direction you're going, the direction of heaven. And no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. In which way are you looking back to the world? You come here. To collect healing but your mind is over there in the world you come here to collect miracle but your mind is over there in the world you come here to collect blessing but you put your hand on the plow and you're looking back no Christian life no Christian commitment and no Christian dedication or devotion. You are not looking at the word of God. And you are not going the direction of heaven. Only healing. Miracle. To be collected. But then you are not following the way of the Lord. And no man. That's talking about you there. No man having put his hand to the plow. And looking back. Is fit for the kingdom the Lord is coming and I will be in the kingdom somebody there said I will be in the kingdom you know what it takes to take your eyes away from those women in the world to take your mind away from that promise of occultic people in the world and look straight looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith Luke chapter 17 in Luke chapter 17 verse 32 remember Lord's wife those, those are the words of Jesus who do you remember of Lord's wife no man, no woman, having put his hand, her hand on the plow, and looking back, is feed for the kingdom. Go to the mountain top. Look not behind thee. Escape from this judgment coming. Lord's wife had too much in Sodom. Too many friends in Sodom. 
too much attachment to Sodom and too much association in Sodom and she saw those angels and the angels laid hold on them escaped to the mountain don't look back she looked back and became what a pillar of salt and that's what the lord is saying he says remember lord's wife god's promises for our security second peter chapter 2 verse 20 for if after they have escaped lord's wife if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ those are saved people those are converted people these are children of God they escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ look at this they if they are again entangled therein they were saved if they were if they are again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning the one who escaped the kingdom of darkness escaped the lifestyle of sinning through the knowledge of the Lord Savior Jesus Christ then he backslides he goes back to those things if you die in that condition the last edge is worse with them than the beginning for it had been better for them them uh, not to have known the way of righteousness it would have been better they were not even saved to start with than uh, after they have known it after they were saved to turn from that holy commandment delivered unto them but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the soul the swine the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire the lord is saying that you need to come back to the faith you need to be kept in the faith you need to keep on holding on holding on till the very end if that eternal abode of the saints is going to be yours. Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I was destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. When you became a Christian, when you became born again, when you repented of your sins, you destroyed the breach that connected you to the world. You burnt the breach that connected you to occultic powers. You burnt the breach that connected you to the old sin partner i am born again i'm a child of god i born the bridge connecting me to anything and everything in the world are you building those bridges back because if i build again the things which I was destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. But you come to live now in newness of life. Say, Christ is mine. 
His salvation is mine. His goodness is mine. I'm crucified with Christ. Verse 20. Nevertheless, I live. I am crucified with Christ. I don't have any business building the old bridge I've destroyed. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Satan will not live in you. Demons will not live in you. Corruption will not live in you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He says, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live by the faith of the Son of God. I live that by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The Lord is calling you this morning not for healing, not for deliverance, not for all this bread and butter. The Lord is calling you to re-examine, re-examine your life and find out are you still in the faith? Because, because, because if all you get is healing, if all you get is blessing, bread and butter, and you lose your soul for eternity, You'll be wondering, why did I behave in such a foolish way? He's giving us promises. Promises for salvation. And promises for holiness. And promises for sanctification. And promises for obedience. And promises for righteousness. And he wants us to abide in those promises. And he says, he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved we're going to rise up and pray and say lord give me the grace grant me the grace i want to abide to the very end the promises of god are conditional if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves will pray will seek my face and will turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. Remember, you need the grace to abide unto the very end. Open your mouth, open your mouth, pray unto the Lord.